Welcome everyone, Questine here with a discussion about Carl Franz in Total War Warhammer 3, Patch 5.0, Thrones of Decay, and his new campaign, and his campaign mechanics. Now, I've already covered how the Empire works, I've talked about how Imperial Authority represents the Imperial factions controlling territory in, in the Empire, how it starts at 66, all that. So, over here in this video, I want to cover Carl Franz himself, because there have been some changes made over here. You can replenish in foreign territory as you could before. You get 20% upkeep for electric and state troopers in your army. You get 5% weapon strength and missile damage per experience rank for all electric and state troopers in his own army. So that's one change. In other ways, you do keep a lot of the benefits, like Lord Recruit rank is still uh, is still over there, though it is now part of the skill line uh, right there. I believe it was the faction effect. So now you're getting five growth per allied for, uh, faction, but let's just focus on the skill line. So Imperial Special Forces, so melee attack for X Guard, then great swords, various benefits. Armor for electric on state troopers, vigor loss reduction, missile strength and leadership. Upkeep benefits for the knight units. Hero capacity for Imperial Captains and Hero Recruit rank. 50 growth in the local province. Free control in the local province. And then Weapon Strength, Perfect Vigor, and Unbreakable. He's also got Leader of Men. So electric count, So what this does is increases the Electric Count State Troop pull capacity uh, for them. So when you're... Let me just see if I do have an army. Protector so when you're weak. recruiting Electric Count State Troopers... Generally, you have like one unit in this pool, and there's a cooldown, right, of roughly 10 turns. But with that particular skill line, you get two un up to two units over there Summon the in that counts. particular pool. And outside of that, largely the same, same quest items, same death. Okay. Faction effect-wise, he has access to an electric count. He has diplomatic immunity from penalties in trespassing in Imperial regions. He gets 25% allegiance points. He get, keeps the campaign movement range and gets five growth per allied faction. So he gets a good amount of growth if he has allies. And he has ways of ensuring that happen. And keep, keep in mind, he gets a lot of growth in his province. He gets growth faction-wide and he gets growth from Imperial authority. Now he still starts at war with the Imperial Secessionists, but now you start uh, in control of Helmgard, so you no longer have to deal with a really annoying siege early on over here in order to take Helmgard. So it's very easy to wipe out Alhart, um, though from what I've noticed, like, Boris Todbringer is in a lot of trouble early on from, like, the campaigns I've played. Lots of pressure from Kazrak. So you may want to rush for that, or you can want uh, go for Marienburg. Personally, I went for Marienburg early on in this campaign, but there are various choices over here, including maybe just wiping out Elspeth, because that defeat rate is really, really powerful in uh, the campaign. In terms of um, other things, you now have everything up to Confederation available through regular diplomacy. So you can't do Confederation for regular diplomacy, but you can do Military Alliance, Trade Agreement, Non-Aggression Pact, Military Access, Defensive Alliance, all that kind of stuff. So that is available in your campaign over there. Now, let's take a look at the Electric Count. So you, the way you uh, unlock the Electric Count State Troopers depends on campaign to campaign. Volkmar does it through the Books of Nagash. Um, Gelt will do it for research, Marcus Wolfart for Imperial Supplies. You still need to, t uh, to take control of the electric, uh, various electric counts in order to do it. You then have some of the electric counts which will teleport every single one of them to Carl Francis location. So imagine summoning 13 freaking armies over there to your location. Though you're only going to be able to do this God. if you own the DLC. Because you're going to need to confederate Elspeth. Or you can wipe out Elspeth. You know, maybe that is a good strategy. It's worth pointing out that Elspeth is particularly useful at holding Vlada base. So 
because you no longer have to tell Kalimgard, because Elspeth is generally more useful than Geld, because what Elspeth will do is she'll take Silent, like she these two settlements start under the control of vampire counts, she'll take this out, then she'll take Silent's capital, which is also under control of vampire counts, and then she'll take these free, uh, these regions. Fort Sol is not considered as a critical territory of the Empire, so Derfoot took that. The AI is bad at taking forts. Just point out. Great bash in forts, whatever. You name it, it happens. So electric counts still work the same way. How Fine. did I get that one? I don't know. And regardless, I'm not going to show off that master engineer. Uh, mind you, I don't have the DLC installed. It just, I think, it happened from Confederation. <laughs> just just going to point that out. Like, I haven't recruited anything like that or in, anything like that. Um... So, electric counts stay the same. Imperial authority represents territory control. You still have prestige and you still have fealty. You gain prestige passively. Like, you still gain it for bows, but you can also gain it passively from electric count fealty and excluding confederated or destroyed factions. So, you can, so, if you keep the electric counts alive and the more fealty you have with them, the more prestige you're going to get. And this will tie into Electro Machinations. This looks similar, doesn't it? If you've played the Yan Bo campaign, you will feel right at home. So, uh, you still have um, influence with what initially starts. Um, before I go into this, like you still have diplomat. Uh, right now it's called diplomatic talks, but you initially have electoral machinations, so you can affect diplomacy between electro counts, but he has a research that allows you to use influence with high elves, dwarves, Bretonia, Cafean factions. And you can also upgrade the decrees. So these are decrees. So you've got the pre decrees and diplomacy. You can upgrade both of them. I upgrade the diplomacy work on increasing the decrees. You got the various things. They all cost prestige. They all have a cooldown. Call to arms, reducing recruitment cost and increasing local recruitment capacity for free turns, free turn cooldown. Commendation gives the army 2,500 experience with the free turn cooldown. Open the gates, run to one population surplus. Again, free turn cooldown. Inquisition, the target empire region has all province corruption reduced by 50. So when you take out Festus, you can reduce the corruption by a lot. Uh, conscription, which is very similar to what Yan Bo can do. The target army instantly completes one turn of ongoing local, uh, local and global recruitment. Send aid spawns a degrading army to the target empire faction at the target region and this is the kind of army because i just uh, confederated uh, midland got uh, toddy if you're wondering about toddy by the way he's basically he's still got like his own special skill line i'm not sure if he's even worth using really i mean he's got a melee skill line but he does uh, miss out the army benefits that an imperial general can get it, it's up to discussion so if you're using toddy i mean he is pretty Ready. strong. He does have, uh, he does have, uh, he can get um, an Imperial Griffin, but obviously he's missing like an upkeep benefit. So yeah, Tadi could use some love, I think. I mean, you could probably use him as a generic uh, Imperial General focused on combat skill, but like worth pointing out the General of the Empire, yes, you, you get to choose between Drill Instructor and uh, Training. Generally speaking, I think Drill Instructor is kind of the better choice between the two of them. And if I look at the stats, Toddy is probably going to have right, better stats, right? Over there. Like more armor, all that. So he's just going to be better. So I guess they're just, they decide to focus on what his strengths are actually uh, in in a campaign over here. He's fairly low level because he got his ass whooped by Kazrak over here at the basically so? save his ass okay so to increase fealty like fealty can increase based on like all the dilemmas that we used to have now still happen but they affect fealty and there's also a new way so for instance let's say you know you've got Averheim taking Flensburg after it's gone raised into the ground before you could either let Averheim keep it get fealty with them uh, and or you could force them to give it back for fealty with Sterling and also Imperial Authority when you do something like that. Now, however, you have a third action where when you force them to do so, uh, or you can just, you know, 
make peace basically so you gain fealty with both them but it does cost uh, to, uh, to, to do so so fealty is mainly increased however through sand aid but there's also various actions um, having a good relation diplomatically with the faction will um, help with fealty so like here I'm getting five uh, you know I'm, I'm getting uh, uh, five from events three from high relations four from base fealty but I'm also losing because of various decrees on confederations and electric counts destroyed that's the reason I'm losing over there because otherwise I would have ten full on uh, ten fealty requisition all electric count state troopers will be replenished and instantly so all the units that you unlock over here you can replenish all of them instantly by using that particular uh, decree causes belly so safely declare war on a target electric count faction without suffering a loss of fealty with other electric counts so if you declare war without doing this it will cost you a lot in terms of your fealty elspeth by the way pretty sure she doesn't have to worry about this then you have um then you have unify requires 10 fealty and uh you can confederate the target electric count five turns so cost of belly has 10 turns requisition 15 turns unify five turns right and you can upgrade these either increasing the cooldown though it does take a decent amount of time but you can um you can remove the fealty penalty or improve the ability reduce cooldown all that kind of stuff that's how his unique campaign mechanic works right now. So you're no longer running around like a maniac the Empire. trying to keep all the Empire together. Because as long as you're, you know, at stagnant, you're fine, right? It gets worse if you go in decline, but, you know, you can play a campaign at stagnant. You start at stagnant. So you don't have to run around like a maniac, you know, going for Helmgard, going for Festus, going for Vlad. You can chill out. You don't. Uh, you can chill out. You can build up, and because of all the changes in terms of recruitment, hero capacity, artillery options, it is a significantly better campaign. I, 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 I think so. Uh, you still get a random mage. It would be nice to have a choice, but yeah, there's there's been some fairly substantial uh, improvements over here in this particular campaign that Carl Franz does benefit for. It was, I think, a pretty bad joke that he was genuinely the worst Emperor. campaign in the entire empire. You still can't take mountains, which is a bit of a shame, but, like, yeah. Um, like, basically every other Imperial campaign before was much better than this. There's pros and cons with it um, between Gelt and the others. Uh, sorry, between Karl Franz and the others. Um, Volkmar and Marcus don't have anything uh, new. Carl Franz does have basically on Bo's mechanics added to him, though some different things, right? It's not uh, matters of state, but there, it is obviously taking from that. And you also still, and you have a version of the High Elf Influence mechanic, which I, I'm, I admit that I'm a bit disappoint, disappointed because, like, you know, when I when I started researching this, I thought to myself, oh, I, we're gonna actually have a conference, and maybe it will be something like Ajax's mechanic and. Um, Troy, where, you know, you, you have a feast, you get together, all that kind of stuff. No, <laughs> you just have a better influence system than, you know, just having Imperial factions. It, like, it would have been awesome to get some scenes like, you know, what you got in the Immortal Empires trailer. Because pretty sure that's what it's inspired by. To the provinces. So, But this is what Karl Franz gets. Overall, um, an improved campaign compared to where it was before. Uh, between... The changes to the Empire in terms of recruitment, in terms of hero capacity, and the changes to Imperial Authority and Fealty and Prestige, it does play a lot better uh, as a campaign. If there's anything I would say about it, it's like the Empire's economy, uh, let's just say, like the units of the Empire are still the same, the economy is still, still the same, you just have a lot more toys to play with. Electrocon state troopers are significantly cheaper, especially in Carl's own army. Also, to conclude this, handgunner units work a lot better. Just flat out a lot better. I've played quite a few battles with handgunner units, uh, including, you know, 
Like, I don't have... Like, this campaign, I played without anything DLC. Like, everything I did in this campaign with the, without DLC. But, yeah, I do have access to Elspeth. Can't really talk about it, what's in that campaign. Uh, but I can just say this. Obviously, she's very focused on gunpowder. It's, that's pretty clear from the trailer. And I can tell you... Time. Played a lot with gunpowder in this campaign and other campaigns. Just, in general, a far, far better experience. So that's a thing that's going to really benefit Carl France. The real question, I guess, is this campaign worth playing without Thrones of Chaos as the DLC? Can you just enjoy it without the DLC? I mean, I have. That's all I can say. Quistine signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.